Jesus was a going up on his way to Jerusalem to be lifted high on a tree that he might draw men to him. Well, the monster began to praise him.
peace deep within. I'm resting in the palm of my Savior's hand. For I have been covered by the blood of the Lamb. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Walking my faith, living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Jesus has rescued me. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Walking my faith, living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Jesus has rescued me. I'm reminded of the one who had no sight. With just a little bit of faith and then everything was right. Now Jesus came and healed that little blind man. Well, I know I can be made whole by the blood of the Lamb. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Jesus has rescued me. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Walking my way, living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Jesus has rescued me. Oh, now Satan has no hope.
Jesus has rescued me. Amen. Appreciate you being here tonight. Let me just make a few announcements. We're going to be here at 1130 Sunday night. If you want to come and pray, we'll... Saturday night, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm the first mistake I ever made and be the last one. In 11.30 uh, Saturday night, we will be having Sunday school and church as usual on Sunday. So let's just come on out and be here. Amen. And we'll be a revival with Brother Gobble uh, starting uh, January the 8th. Brother Cliff Gobble, great preacher of the gospel. And we want to be here for the revival and get things started off right. Brother Conley over at East Clover starting revival Sunday. New Year's Day with Brother Matt Gunner. He pastors West Asheville Church of God, a good preacher, a good man. Be at East Clover Church of God if you want to go over there. That starts the 1st of January. All right, we're going to receive our offering. Everybody give us unto the Lord tonight as the ushers come. Praise God. We're blessed. I said we're blessed. I don't forget where I came from. I don't forget where I'm at, and I don't forget where I'm going. Whoo! Praise God, I've got the victory. Amen. My victory's not contingent upon anything but God. That's all. And he don't make mistakes and he don't fail and he don't change. He's God. Ha <laughs> ha. Whoo, I'm gonna shout whether you do or not. God bless this offering tonight. Anointed in the Holy Ghost and bless our good people that have come here. There's a lot of people out, out of town, God. This is a season where people take off and, and enjoy their families and protect them that are gone and bring them back safe and help our church, our uh, year coming up, God. We know the, the coming of the Lord is near and time is running out. We want to do our best to follow you and we're going to praise you for as you bless this offering. Those that give and don't, ha don't have to give, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> to say again we're glad to have the chances with us would you folks stand up please yeah go ahead stand up they're, they're from Florida they moved up here and uh, give them a hand we welcome them things should get back to normal here amen in a few days but we're enjoying ourselves Jesus may come before Sunday it's all right with me I'm ready to go Whew. I felt the Holy Ghost right then I said I'm ready to go I stay ready because I don't know when he's coming. But I know one thing, he is coming. <laughs> and I want to keep myself packed up, prayed up, fired up, loved up, and ready to go up. Amen. All right, adoration is coming to sing. Worship God as he come. Let's have church tonight. Amen. That's what we came for. Let's just worship God. God's own chariot coming in the morning. Oh, how a wonderful day. Grand old chariot come without a warning. Take his people away. I'll be standing there at the station waiting for I'm going home. I'll roll away. Hey, when God's chariot comes, I'll roll away. Hey, when God's chariot comes, some Oh, we'll be leaving this world of 
sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah. Our world of sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, oh, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, some happy day, hallelujah, I'm going home, we'll be leaving this world of sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah, I'll roll away. the mountains, what will be your doom? I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, oh, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, some happy day, oh, I'm going home, we'll be leaving this world of sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah, I'll roll away. This world of sin and sorrow, riding in the cherry glory, hallelujah. I'll roll away when God's chariot comes. Oh, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes. Some happy day, hallelujah. I'm going home. We'll be leaving this world of sin and sorrow, riding in the cherry glory, hallelujah. I'll roll away. Sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah. I'll roll away when God's chariot comes. God's own chariot coming in the morning, oh, that wonderful day. Grand old chariot come without a warning, take his people away. I'll be standing there at the station waiting for I'm going home. world of sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, well, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes, some happy day, hallelujah, I'm going home, we'll be leaving this world of sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah, I'll roll Sin and sorrow, riding in the chariot glory, hallelujah. I'll roll away, I'll roll away, oh, I'll roll away when God's chariot comes. I'll roll away when God's chariot comes. Oh, song.
is the world of sin and sorrow. Riding in the chariot, glory, hallelujah. Man, the young people can go at this time. One of these days it'll be over. We'll preach the last message. We'll sing the last song. And we're going to be with the Lord. You got to keep that vision clear. Don't let nothing get between you and God. Hang on with everything you've got. Amen. I want you to stand, please. Turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The faith chapter of the Bible, the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 6, a very familiar scripture. About everybody knows this scripture. So we're going to preach on it tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to be in your house one more time. I pray the Spirit of the Lord would be upon us here tonight as we endeavor to preach the gospel. Touch everyone that's listening. Touch those that are listening by internet and help them tonight. Those that are traveling and away from the church, bring them back safe. Heal the sick and save the lost. We're living in perilous times. We need you tonight. Help us, God. Those that have needs here in this congregation, meet their needs according to your riches and glory. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let me read that just one more time. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to preach tonight on the subject. The C's. The C's. The letter C. Of faith. The seas of faith. And you can be seated, if you will, please, at this time. Faith is of vital importance to humanity. It's important to the world. But the problem is everybody doesn't have faith. Everybody doesn't believe the Bible. Faith is a thing that God has given unto us. And many people don't want to accept what God gives because they're walking in the flesh and they're living by their own way of doing. But we live for God. We believe there's a God. We believe there's a heaven. We believe there's a hell. We believe the word of God to be true from Genesis to Revelation. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to all those that trust in him. We serve a mighty God and we believe him. Faith is important to the lost that don't know God. And it's important to the believer. It's important to both of us. The lost must have faith to get saved. You cannot get saved unless you believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. You must believe in the death of Jesus Christ. You must believe in the resurrection of Jesus. You must believe that his blood cleanses from sin and washes whiter than snow. You believe you're a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. The lost must have faith to be saved in Romans 10 verses 8 through 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, 
That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto salvation, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all, all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're saved because you call on Jesus. You believed that there's a hell. You believed there was a heaven. You knew you were lost. You knew you were on your way to hell. So because you believed you were saved. So that's what you must have to get saved. But faith keeps the Christian after he's saved. You're not only saved by believing God, you're kept by faith in Jesus Christ. First Peter 1, 3 through 5 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now we're kept. We're not falling in love with this world. We're not going back to the things we came out of. We're not picking up the things we laid down. We're taking a more firm grip. We believe time is at hand that judgment must begin at the house of God. We must have faith that it, we're gonna continue on. You fighting hard battles, you're living a life where Satan is rigorously coming against you, but you're gonna make it because you have faith in God. This faith is gonna be revealed in the last time. The church is gonna have authority. The church will have power. The church will have rulership because the church believes. So we're saved by faith and we're kept by faith. So in all the facets of salvation, faith must have a great part. From the beginning in conversion until the time when God calls us to heaven, faith does a great work in our life as a Christian because your feelings are gonna be different. You're gonna feel good sometimes. Sometimes you're not gonna feel good. Sometimes you feel like you're at the gates of heaven ready to go inside and sometimes you feel like you're at the gates of hell and ready to go inside. So you don't go by your feeling, you live by faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. Faith never dies, it lives forever. It's the indicator that tells out a man's attitude toward God. You can tell if a man loves God by the way he believes. When you see a person go through trials and, and problems and, and they don't deny God and they don't uh, detest God, but they accept what they're going through and they still got the joy of the Lord. They still have the victory. It's because they have faith that's gonna bring them through. As we continue in this message, I want us to look at these seas of faith tonight. First of all, there's consecration. It simply means to devote to a purpose. It means to be dedicated with a deep feeling. I am consecrated to God because I believe in God. My faith causes me to be consecrated. I'm here tonight because I believe God. I believe what the word said about assembling in the house of God and worshiping God. The purpose of every Christian must be to please God. And our text said without faith, we cannot please God. We don't please God by our works. And we do have works if we have God. But it's the works of faith. If it's not the works of faith, it's not worth anything. If it's self-righteousness, if it's something you proclaim on your own that you give on your own, it won't last. It must come by faith in God. Our works are by faith. Heaven is our goal. Our faith will keep us looking to heaven. I believe it. I've never seen it, but I believe heaven's a real place. I believe 
believe that when I leave this world, I am sure that when I leave this world, that heaven will be my home. Well, how do you know it? Because faith tells me. Faith gives me the assurance. There's no shaking. There's no wavering. He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with a wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. He said a double-minded man is unstable in all of its ways. According to James 1 and 8, so faith helps us to not waver. I've never lost the vision of heaven. I've never lost the desire to go there. And I've never wanted to see hell. I've never wanted to see the devil. He has no appeal. But Jesus Christ has an appeal to me. And heaven is a place where I'm expecting to go to. Consecration will get us there. God is important in our consecration. You cannot live for God in a consecrated life without God. You can't live it on your own. But you must be determined that you've got a goal. What is your goal? Your goal is to reach heaven. Elijah was a great prophet. And God called him to straighten out Israel and all of their sins. But there was another man by the name of Elisha. Well, God had determined that he was going to take Elijah to heaven. Now, Elijah... And Enoch are in heaven. I believe they're the two witnesses. They're the only ones in the Bible that's recorded that didn't die. And the two witnesses are coming back during tribulation and they're going to die. So God had a purpose for Elijah. He took him to heaven. He didn't take him to paradise. When people died in the Old Testament time, they went to paradise. The only two that went to heaven was Enoch and Elijah. Now you say, well, how can that be? I don't know. You'll have to ask God when you get to heaven, but I believe it is. I don't have to rationalize with God. I don't have to understand every little thing. There's a lot of things I don't understand, but I believe God anyhow. I'm not going to quit believing God because I don't understand something. I believe him and my faith is going to carry me through. Elijah was told to go and anoint Elisha to be the prophet in his place. God's going to take him to heaven. Oh, Elisha is plying with 12 yoke of oxen and he with the 12. And Elijah shows up and puts his mantle on Elisha. There was something about that mantle that got a hold of Elisha. And Elisha said to Elijah, let me go back and kiss mom and dad goodbye. And then I'll follow you. He said, go back again. What have I done to you? He went back and he slew the oxen and he boiled them with the instruments of the oxen, the plows and the things he used for wood. And he kissed his mom and dad goodbye. And he followed Elijah from then on. He wasn't going to let him get out of his sight because he had faith in that prophet. He had something he wanted. He had determined he wanted a double portion of Elijah's gifts. Elijah performed 16 miracles and Elisha performed 32 miracles. Twice as much as God used Elijah to do. But Elisha had a goal, he had a faith, he had a purpose. And I'm telling you, my faith drives me through the storm. My faith keeps me when I don't understand. My faith lifts me when I'm down. My faith does not let me give up. It keeps me on the journey. So Elisha follows Elijah for some time. In 2 Kings chapter 2, it said there was a time when God would take Elijah into heaven. And he said to Elisha from Gilgal, let us go down to Bethel. And you stay here. I'm going to Bethel. No, no. As the Lord liveth as you live, I'm going to follow you. He had a goal. He's not going to let it get away. Your faith is what's going to keep you to the rapture. You're going to have a lot of mishaps. You're going to try to figure things out. You're going to say, how come this happened to me? Why do I have to go through this? But your faith stands up and your goal is still secure. You're going to follow God regardless of what comes your way. Elisha said, I'm going with you to Bethel. 
The prophets of Bethel said, don't you know the Lord's going to take your master away from you today? He said, I know. They said to Elisha, hold your peace. Elisha said, I'm going to go down to Jericho. You stay here while I go to Jericho. But Elisha said, no. As you live and as the Lord lives, I'm going with you. They went down to Jericho and the prophets said the same thing, the son of the prophets. They said to Elisha, don't you know the Lord's going to take your master away from you today? In other words, it was known that Elijah's going to leave and you're going to be left without your master. I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said, I'm going to Jordan. You stay here at Jericho. No, I'm going with you. As the Lord lives and you live, I'm not leaving you. They went to Jordan, they got to the river, and Elijah took his mantle and stretched it across the water, and the waters departed. There were 50 sons of the prophets that were sitting there watching what was going on. They were spectating. And when they got to the other side, Elijah and Elisha, Elisha was on his tail everywhere he went. Elijah stopped and said, I want to know what do you want? He said, well, that's easy. I want a double portion of your power. He said, if you see me when I'm taken up from the earth, you shall have it. But if you see me not, you shall not have it. And all of a sudden, the heaven split and a chariot of fire came down out of heaven and separated Elijah from Elisha. And a whirlwind picked up Elijah and took him into heaven. And Elisha cried out to Elijah, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And the mantle fell, and Elisha grabbed the mantle of Elijah and went back to the Jordan River, and he stretched it across the river, and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the waters parted for Elisha. Those 50 sons of the prophets are seeing what's going on. They've seen all this. They come back to uh, Elisha and they said, we'd like to take uh, and look for your master. Maybe he's in a valley somewhere or he's on a mountain. And Elisha said, it won't do you any good, don't go. How come Elisha told them that? He knew where Elijah was going. He was going to heaven and you're not gonna find him on this earth. He's out of here, honey. He's done and made his trip and he's waiting there all these years to make his exit back during the tribulation period. So don't look. They went and looked for three days. Bible said they found him not. They came back to Jericho and told Elisha, we can't find him. He said, I told you not to look. It wouldn't do you any good. So Elisha stayed with Elijah until he got his portion from God. He had the faith to have accomplished the task that was before him. We've got to have a faith in the purpose that's before us. Persevering faith, overcoming faith. In 1 John 5 and 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. It was the perseverance. You're going to be ready for the rapture because you persevere. It's not going to get any easier. The overcoming faith will be the difference. The apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 16 and 13, watch ye, stand fast in ye, the faith, quit ye like men. Be strong, let all your things be done with charity. Watch you, stand faith in the faith. The obedient faith is necessary in order to build. God told Noah to build an ark. That was the goal. In Hebrews 11 and 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah built by faith. God said it's going to rain. Woo! I'm going to destroy the earth. Everything's going to die. Do you believe the Bible, church? Do you believe what it said? Do you believe the prophecies? Do you believe the end? Do you believe it's going to happen just like God said? I don't care what they do to Israel. They're fussing about Israel now and our uh, nation, the president and all them throwing Israel under the bus, so to speak. It don't matter what they do. God's already chartered their course. Their purpose has already been laid out from the time of Abraham. I don't worry about it because God's in charge. Nobody else can control this thing. It's under the authority of God. And Noah heard God say, it's going to rain, prepare an ark. He told him how to build it. And by faith, he was warned of God and he moved with fear. And he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. 
Because he believed what God said. The walls of Jericho fell down because Joshua believed God. They weren't a great army. They'd come out of Egypt. They'd come through the wilderness. They'd been tested and tried. And the first big test they had when they went into the land of promise was Jericho. It had walls around it. But God said, I've given you Jericho. You just march around the walls. In Hebrews 11, 30 and 31, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies. The walls of Jericho fell down and the harlot was there and she was saved because spies had come in before and checked out Jericho and she took care of them and the king of Jericho couldn't kill those spies. He got back out of there so she was saved. Her house, the spies said, because you've done this, if you put this scarlet cord in the window when we come to take Jericho, your house will be saved. The wall of Jericho fell down and the harlot Rahab was saved. It was all by faith. It was believing in God that made it happen. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22 said, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having the harp a priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a pure heart, a pure, true heart in full assurance of faith. He said, having our hearts sprinkled uh, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Some of you are going through some hard things, but they're not gonna bring you down. You may go low, but you're not gonna go out. Your light may get very small, but God's gonna pull it back because you have faith and you're trusting God that God is gonna help you. Moses refused because he was consecrated. He made the right decision. In Hebrews 11, 24 through 28, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a seaman, a season, a steaman, they were approaching Christ, greater riches and the treasures in Egypt, for he had had respect unto the recompense of reward. He had a goal. He was consecrated and God brought Israel out of Egypt. Hebrews eleven twenty seven said, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. His faith took him out. Consecrated faith. Then there's not only consecration, there's confidence the quality or state of being certain, certain about what God is, certain about what God said. The three, Hebrew, the three Hebrew boys and Daniel were taken into Babylonian captivity and the king made a great image and commanded that these, everybody in the, in the kingdom bow down and worship. He called all of his princes and his governors and his captains and his counselors and his treasurers and his sheriffs and all of his people together the captains and said, when you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sabbath, psaltery, dulcimer, you're to bow down and worship. But these three men didn't bow when the trumpet sounded. It got them in trouble when the music played. They didn't bow and certain Chaldeans came to the king and said, you made a decree that everyone that doesn't bow when the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sabbath, the psalter, and the dustman is played, if they don't bow, they'll be cast in a burning fiery furnace and the decree had been made, but they didn't bow, they were brought in. And the king threatened them, said, I'm gonna give you one more chance. If you'll bow when the music plays, we'll be all right, we'll forget that. But they said, oh king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter said, if you, we're not gonna serve your gods or worship the golden image that you set up and our God is able to deliver us from your burning fiery furnace. They had a purpose, they had a commitment to God, they were consecrated to God like all the others and they knew God in his power and in his spirit and they had confidence that God would see them through. I don't know where I'm gonna head. I don't know the future, none of you do, but we do know one thing, when we get there, God's gonna be there. The Holy Ghost is gonna be there. The Spirit of God 
is going to be with you. They bound them in their coats and their hose and their hats and their garments. And they cast him in the burning fire. And he said, make the fire one seven times hotter than it was. And they did. And the fire was so hot till it slew those men that threw him in the fire. The old king was astonished. He looked in. He said to his leaders there, he said, did not we cast three men in the fire? True, old king, I see four. And said, the fourth is like the son of God. And said, they're no hurt. He called out for them to come out of the fire. And the Bible said they came out and, and, and the fire had not had any power on their bodies and their hair was not singed nor their coats changed nor the smell of fire upon them. And the king said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who have delivered his servants that trusted in him. They trusted him in him and changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god but their own god. And I make a decree that in my people, nations, and language, every tongue that speaks against and everybody is going to be brought down. They're going to be killed and their house will be made a dunghill. I'm going to destroy them for there is no god that can deliver after the sword of this god. We've got a great god here tonight. We don't have any reason to hold our head down. We've got a promise that he's coming back. Jesus promised a heaven and a, and a place for us to live in. We don't have to be down. We can rejoice evermore. We can praise God because we have Jesus. Confidence in the Lord. They wouldn't worship the gods of Babylon. They wouldn't serve the king. They would not worship the king. We need this confidence and we can have it. He said in 1 John 3 and verse 20, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Our heart doesn't condemn us. We have confidence in God because of that. Hebrews 10, 35 through 39, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he shall, that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not drawn back. We're not cooling down the message. We're not gonna compromise with this world. We're gonna hold on to what we've learned. We've learned from the beginning what it is. We know the truth and the truth has made us free and we're gonna hang on to what we believe. I don't intend on changing. I see a lot of people have changed the way they used to believe. God will judge them. I'm not their judge. I judge people by the Bible, the word of God. He's not gonna call any of us around at the judgment day and ask us what we think about it. He knows your heart. He knows everything about everybody. He's gonna judge them righteously. But oh God, I don't wanna take a chance. I don't wanna compromise what God gave me way back yonder 50 some odd years ago. It's been good all of this time and it's good today. I've got the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. I've got peace in my soul. I have love in my heart. I have an intention to go to heaven heaven my vision is clear I hear a voice calling and beckoning me press on press on continue my comings near I'm looking for the coming of the Lord to come again Ooh. <laughs> it's more than profession it is possession the reason you're mine, I possess you. I have called you out. I have ordained you. I have touched you. I have anointed you. You're my children. Follow me, saith the Lord, and be not afraid. I will take your part, saith God. Raise up your hands and praise him right now. Then there's the sea of communion. We're consecrated, we have confidence, and then we have communion with God. This is an act or instance of sharing. You share in your battles with God. God helps you to fight. 
In 1 Timothy 6 and 12, he said, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. We're in war. We're in war. We're winners. I read the end. <laughs> I'm satisfied with what I have. I'm not looking for another. Sent John the Baptist sent his disciples out to Jesus and said, are you the one that should come or do we look for another? Jesus was the one. He's the only one. Praise God. It's going to be wonderful to stand in his presence and hear him say, well done, son. You didn't compromise. You didn't let down. You held the standards of the book, the word of God. Enter into the joys of the Lord. We share in his fight. He's a captain of our salvation. He's a king. He's all we need here tonight. We share in his provision. He has provided for us clothing, shelter, needs. Paul said, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, he has provided for us. He said in Psalm 37, three through five, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Delight thyself in the Lord, he said. And he'll give you the desire of your heart. And if you're in the Lord and you know the Lord, your desire is going to be spiritual. It's not going to be carnal. You're not going to say, well, Lord, now I'm serving you. I want a golden Cadillac. Your desire will be to get something from heaven in the spirit that'll make you a better Christian, that'll make you greater. What you've gone through is gonna give you a foundation to stand on. I'm standing on a solid foundation. How come? I've been standing on it all these years and it's never give away. This church here is built on a real solid foundation. There's only one crack that I've ever seen in this church. It's up there, way up there in the sound booth that we made to begin with. It's a crack about a foot and a half down in the block up there on the wall. You don't see this brick falling apart around here. They dug a deep foundation. I was around here when they put it in. It'll hold the building. I'm standing on a solid foundation. My God, for 50 some years, he's been with me. And I'm like old Polycarp. They wanted him to deny Christ. He said 80 some years. I believe he said 88 years I've served him. You're gonna tell me to deny him now? And they burned him at the stake and he died a martyr because he would not deny Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I'm not gonna deny him. I'm gonna stand on what he said. He's done too much for me, for me to turn back now. I've come too close. I can smell the aroma. I can see the lights of the city. We're almost home. Don't fret. Just look around you and see how my word has been fulfilled perfectly. You're not in darkness. You're children of light. You're children of day. You know what's going on. So look up and be glad and rejoice. This is a great day for you. For your redemption is near, saith the Lord. Raise up your hands and praise him one more time. John Newton was a, him and his daddy were on a merchant ship. They made money on a ship and he went on a warship and he didn't like the warship and he escaped and he, began to traffic human beings and slaves. He was going to Africa and he'd done so good in trafficking human beings until he uh, got his own ship and he was uh, in the slave trade. He was selling slaves and there was a terrible storm that came up one night on his ship and he got to praying and seeking God and God spared him. And he became a Christian. He became a follower of Christ, John Newton. And he's famous not for his preaching, but for the song Amazing Grace. He wrote the song Amazing Grace. God knew how to bring him in. And God knew how to save him. He knew how to bring you in. But I'm telling you, he's not only brought you in, he's going to keep you until we see him in the clouds. We're not going to be defeated. 
Oh, I'm a walking and I'm a talking with Jesus. Woo! I'm a living for him every day of my life. I'm trusting him with all of my heart. By communion, you shall share in his ability. In Ephesians 3 and 20, now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, he has ability. We share with that ability. He said in Proverbs 3 and 5 through 7, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Trust in the Lord. We commune with him by suffering with him and we also receive his life. 2 Timothy 11 and 12, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. I'm suffering a little bit. You're suffering. Some of you maybe have had trials worse than I've had. Everybody has their own problems. We've all got them, but we've got life. We've got life. Well, why do we have life? We've got faith. Faith without works is dead. We have the works of life. We're alive. We know God. We don't care what happens because we've seen the other side. We know where we're headed. Oh, my God. It can fall apart tonight, but I'm safe in the arms of Jesus. I'm in this presence. I have his ability in my life. I have his care. I have his love. I have his promise that he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. The last C I want to bring out is the C, the word come. We cannot experience anything from God unless we come. We must come to him. Revelation 22 and 17 said, And the spirit and the bride say come, and let him that heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him come. And take of the water of life freely. God is telling the world, I've got it for you. I've got the blessings we don't know what the future holds. We know prophecies coming to pass. We can see it. Isaiah 1 and 18 said, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. There's two, two sides. There's heaven and there's hell. There's good, there's bad. There's righteousness, there's unrighteousness. There's life, there's death. I'm on the right side. I'm on the right side. Corey Tin Boone said, I've had things in my own hands that uh, I couldn't hold, but when I let God hold them, I continued to possess them. You can't hold by yourself. You can't make it in your own power. You can't live this life. You've got to have faith in God. Your faith will drive the devil out of your life. Your faith will give you encouragement to face every battle. There may be some of you sitting here tonight and you're going through things and you haven't told anybody. You don't know what you're going to do. You're facing something you never faced before, but God is your help. I'm a walking and talking with God. As I walk, I walk. I get to thinking about God and I get to crying. I get to praying. The Holy Ghost comes on me. And I begin to reminisce of my past and see where I'm at and see where we're going and not knowing, God not knowing, wanting God to move so bad, wanting to see the Holy Ghost save the lost and heal the sick and give miracles and signs and wonders, having a great desire. I've been getting up but going to sleep at night, waking up in the middle of the morning and not sleep all night and get up praying and seeking God and trying to get a hold of God. I want to tell you, it's time that we shake the foundation of the church with the prayers of the saints. It's time that we believe for God to see something that we need to see. We need to see God again, church. It's time to love one another and pray one for another that we may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's people sitting right here tonight. You need a touch from now, uh, right now. You need God. You're fighting devils. You're going through battles and Satan's hitting you from every side. But if God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord is for you. He's for Sister Bolin, her sister. 
having problems that's hard, getting calls, people dying. It's hard. It's hard to lose good members out of a church. It's hard to lose a good member out of a family. It's hard. But when they're saved, I don't look at it like a lot of people. I I don't like to miss anybody. Oh, no, I, I, I miss them. But I rejoice because I know where they are. I know where they are. Brother and Sister McDaniel came here and he was in a wheelchair and they both died at the same time. They're better off. They're with Jesus. And that's why we're here. We're just getting ready to leave too. It's just a matter of time when he calls us. We're all headed out. But thank God. I got a... <clears throat> Don't pay attention to what you see with a natural eye. Get that spiritual eye because there's angels all about you. My spirit is with you. My holiness caresses you. And my love will take you through. And your faith will carry you to victory. Be not afraid. Be not dumbfounded or confused. For I will give you understanding and I will lift you up and I will satisfy you in this hour, saith the Lord. I want everybody to stand, if you will. Let's get in these altars and pray right now. We got another year coming. I want to see souls saved this coming year. We've already talked about using January for a special Sunday school drive and we're not going to do anything special. We're not going to give away any gifts. We're not going to give away any money. We're going we're to challenge every family of this church to bring one person to Sunday school every week in, June, in January. Just one person. I don't care who it is. Every family challenge you to bring one person. God will tell you who to talk to. But talk to the Lord about your life here tonight. Talk to him about the spirit of God and about faith and about trusting God and believing what God said. Talk to him tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me to preach. Thank you for this service. Thank you for this altar call. Thank you for the singing. Thank you for the band. Thank you for the sanctuary and the furniture and the instruments. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that you've given us. Oh, God, thank you for Pentecost. Thank you for the Word that we can study and live by that produces faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you tonight, Father. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I praise your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch everyone here, God. These are your people. They're praying people. They love you. Bless them. Bless him, God. Touch him, Lord. Move in his home. Move everything out of the way that needs to be moved. By your mighty power, we believe you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your God. Touch him, God. Help him. He's going through a lot of hardships. But you're with him. Satan can't bring him down. He's your property. Help him, God. Move on these that are sick. God, in the name of Jesus. Help her, Father. Help her, Father. Help her, Father. Help her, Father. Every one of them, God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless her, Father. Bless her, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God for our sister. Praise God for our brother. Thank you, Jesus. Touch her, heal her. Rebuke this affliction in her body. Give her a pure, sound mind in Jesus' name now. Oh! 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 Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help her, God. She's got a lot of problems. 
got a household God that they don't serve God and she loves you with all of her heart and it's hard for her but she's been faithful she's carried that cross she's been true God bless her save her household touch my sister God facing things God that troubles her and bothers her but God she's your child she's faithful she loves you bless her tonight her companion touch him God all of these in this altar help them right now in the name of Jesus she da da ba da 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 Messiah Touch her, God. Touch him tonight, Father. Bless my brother, God. Bless my brother, God. Oh, brother Goodman, God. Bless him. She da 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 bo. She da 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 bo. She da 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 bo. Ko da 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 ma ma. Whoo! Hallelujah, Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're doing good, ain't you? Praise God. Praise God. You're doing good, ain't you? Oh, yes. Raise your hands and praise him. Raise your hands and praise him one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. folks come to church and I want you to come to be blessed amen I thought about brother and sister Insco here about six months ago man they was really having some terrible problems her health things that happened to them and now look at her God touched her I believe that I know that I was there I saw it and I was <laughs> Woo! She loves God. They're faithful. And God said that He'll be faithful to us. It's going to help you. Just hold on. Don't let your troubles get you down. Just forget them. Say, it's all right, devil. God's bigger than you are. He's bigger than your trouble. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Stand and raise your hands and praise Him. Remember. Well, you praise him. I love you, brother. Thank God. Remember, uh, Saturday night at 11.30, we may not have but me and my wife out here, but we're coming. And uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning, we ain't going to worry. If we don't have a big crowd, we're going to have Sunday school. We're going to have preaching. We're not preaching to the crowd. We're preaching for Jesus. Come on now. Pretty good crowd here tonight. We usually have a little more, but... God's blessing us. He got a lot of people out of town. We're going to turn them out of the church when they get back, and that'll settle that. <laughs> Amen. Nah. God bless them. They have a right. Shake hands, love each other, and pray for me if you don't have anybody else to pray for. I certainly need it. I love you, buddy. Thank you, Father. Hey, folks, we won't have prayer meeting tomorrow night. Just rest tomorrow night. We'll use that Saturday night for our prayer meeting. You that come to prayer meeting, if you can be here, please come and pray. I believe it'll be a great blessing to us. If you don't get enough sleep, go to bed at 8 and get up and come up here and then go back home and go to bed. <laughs> God bless. Well, we had more than that.